Dr. Chinua Okoye, a renowned political economist from Nigeria, has dedicated his life to understanding the complexities of African development. His journey began decades ago, driven by a passion to uncover the underlying factors that influence the continent's progress and setbacks. His work delves into the intricate relationship between governance, economics, and social well-being. By meticulously analyzing data and trends, Dr. Okoye has been able to highlight the interconnectedness of these elements and their impact on the everyday lives of African citizens. Dr. Okoye argues that the root of Africa's suffering lies within its ruling class. He has consistently pointed out that the decisions made by those in power have far-reaching consequences, often detrimental to the majority of the population. He believes that this elite group, driven by self-interest, has perpetuated a system that benefits them at the expense of the masses. This system, according to Dr. Okoye, is characterized by corruption, nepotism, and a lack of accountability, which stifles true progress and development. Dr. Okoye's research is particularly relevant to Nigeria. His in-depth studies of Nigeria's political and economic landscape provide a microcosmic view of the broader issues facing the African continent. As Africa's most populous nation and a significant economic power, Nigeria's struggles are often seen as a microcosm of the continent's broader challenges. The country's vast resources and potential are frequently undermined by systemic issues that Dr. Okoye tirelessly works to expose and address. His work has sparked debate and ignited calls for change. Academics, policymakers, and activists alike have engaged with his findings, leading to a broader discourse on the need for systemic reform. He challenges us to confront uncomfortable truths about power, privilege, and the responsibility of leadership. Dr. Okoye's insights compel us to question the status quo and consider the long-term implications of current governance practices. Dr. Okoye's insights, often shared through academic journals and public lectures, resonate deeply with those seeking to understand the roots of Africa's challenges. His ability to communicate complex ideas in an accessible manner has made his work influential across various sectors. His voice adds to a growing chorus demanding accountability, transparency, and a more equitable future for all Africans. The impact of his work is evident in the increasing number of movements and initiatives aimed at fostering good governance and social justice. Through his work, Dr. Okoye invites us to move beyond simplistic narratives. He encourages a deeper understanding of the historical and contemporary factors that shape Africa's political and economic realities. He urges us to engage in a nuanced and critical examination of the systems that perpetuate inequality and suffering across Africa. By doing so, we can begin to identify and implement solutions that address the root causes of these issues. His perspective is a valuable contribution to the ongoing dialogue about Africa's future. Dr. Okoye's work not only highlights the challenges, but also offers a vision for a more just and prosperous continent, inspiring hope and action among those committed to positive change. Dr. Okoya argues that Africa's ruling class holds the key to understanding the continent's persistent struggles. 
He believes that the actions and decisions of these leaders have far-reaching consequences that shape the lives of millions. He posits that this small, powerful group, often composed of politicians, business magnates, and military leaders, has consistently prioritized personal gain over the needs of the people they govern. This elite class, driven by self-interest, has created a system that benefits only a few while leaving the majority to suffer. This self-serving approach, he argues, has had a devastating impact on the lives of ordinary Africans. The neglect and exploitation by those in power have led to widespread poverty and suffering, with little hope for improvement. According to Dr. Okoye, the ruling class has systematically siphoned off resources meant for public good. Corruption is rampant, with funds that should be used for development and public services being diverted into private pockets. This includes funds intended for education, health care, infrastructure, and social safety nets. Schools remain underfunded, hospitals lack essential supplies, and infrastructure projects are left incomplete. This has resulted in a lack of basic services, limited opportunities for advancement, and widespread poverty. Children are forced to study in dilapidated classrooms. Communities struggle with inadequate infrastructure, and families face daily hardships. Moreover, Dr. Okoye points to the manipulation of government institutions and policies to maintain the status quo. The ruling class uses its power to control elections, suppress opposition, and pass laws that entrench their position. This includes rigging elections, suppressing dissent, and enacting laws that favor the elite. These actions undermine democracy and prevent meaningful change from taking place. This creates a vicious cycle where the ruling class remains entrenched in power, further consolidating their wealth and influence. The gap between the rich and the poor continues to widen with the elite enjoying opulent lifestyles while the masses struggle to survive. The consequences of this exploitative system are dire. Starvation, destitution, and displacement are common, with millions of Africans living in dire conditions. Millions of Africans are trapped in poverty, lacking access to basic necessities and opportunities for a better life. The daily struggle for survival is a harsh reality for many. The gap between the rich and the poor continues to widen, fueling social unrest and instability. Protests and demonstrations are frequent as people demand justice and a fairer distribution of resources. The legacy of suffering persists with no end in sight. To understand the current state of affairs, Dr. Okoye emphasizes the importance of examining Africa's colonial past. He points out that the roots of many contemporary issues can be traced back to the era of colonial domination, where foreign powers imposed their will on African societies. He argues that colonial powers laid the foundation for the extractive systems that continue to plague the continent. These systems were designed to benefit the colonizers, extracting valuable resources while leaving local communities impoverished and marginalized. They installed puppet leaders who served their interests, often drawn from local elites who benefited from maintaining the colonial order. These leaders were given power and privileges in exchange for their loyalty, creating a class of individuals who were more aligned with colonial interests than with the needs of their own people. This created a system where loyalty to the colonizers rather than service to the people was rewarded. 
the colonial powers used ceremonies and awards to reinforce this loyalty, further entrenching the divide between the ruling elite and the general population. This legacy of exploitation and inequality continued long after independence. Despite the celebrations and the apparent transfer of power, the underlying structures of exploitation remained largely intact. Many African nations transitioned from colonial rule to independence with the same ruling class still in power. These leaders, often educated and groomed by the colonial powers, continue to operate within the same frameworks that had been established during the colonial period. These newly independent governments often adopted the same exploitative practices of their predecessors. The bureaucratic systems and policies remained unchanged, perpetuating the cycle of inequality and underdevelopment. They maintained close ties with former colonial powers, often prioritizing economic agreements that benefited foreign corporations over the needs of their citizens. These agreements frequently favored the interests of multinational corporations, leading to continued resource extraction and economic dependency. This continuity of power and practice, Dr. Okoye argues, is at the heart of Africa's ongoing struggles. The persistence of these colonial era systems has led to widespread discontent and social unrest as communities continue to face economic hardship and inequality. He believes that dismantling this deeply entrenched system of inequality is crucial for achieving true and lasting progress. Dr. Okoya advocates for a comprehensive approach that includes political, economic, and social reforms to address the root causes of inequality and build a more just and equitable society. Dr. Okoya points to corruption as a defining characteristic of many African governments. He highlights how embezzlement, bribery, and cronyism have become rampant, diverting crucial resources away from essential public services. This corruption, he argues, is not simply a matter of individual wrongdoing, but a systemic issue deeply embedded in the way many African countries are governed. Economic mismanagement is another critical issue highlighted by Dr. Okoye. He cites instances of reckless spending, unsustainable debt accumulation, and the prioritization of short-term gains over long-term development goals. These practices, he argues, have had a devastating impact on African economies, hindering growth and perpetuating poverty. Perhaps the most glaring consequence of this flawed system is the staggering level of social inequality prevalent across Africa. Dr. Okoye presents data revealing the vast wealth gap between the elite few and the impoverished masses. He argues that this disparity is not merely an economic issue, but a moral crisis that demands urgent attention. You know, I never really understood uh, corruption. It's, it's something when you hear the word and you try to reflect on it, but, you know, I was raised a church girl and, um, you know, we talked about somebody, you know, taking too much offering or something like that or whatever, and, and I've heard of stealing and it's not that I've been in the closet, but the idea of corruption. And I've always thought about corruption like with erosion or corruption with metals, you know, the rust is a corruption of the metal. But to understand really, truly what and how nasty and difficult and how and what corruption really is. I never, ever really thought, I guess because I was really raised to the fact that 
um, if you, I took time to get educated, if you took time to do things right and be honest, the world was basically honest, but that's not so. So finding out some of the things and the details that I have found out about corruption really, it really gets me very angry. And it's almost a time when you want to have really the words to really stress what you're talking about. I never would have thought as a little girl when I was in high school, I mean, grade school, and we were taught that the Russians were coming. We were taught that the Chinese were coming or that there was something wrong with them. We were taught a lot of strange different things, but not really, they didn't just come out and say it, it's just what we did. There wasn't hardly a month that went by that we didn't get down on our knees under our desk to practice for an eventual bombing. Can you imagine that? At one time, I was so angry with my father because the other children, families seemed like they could afford to get a, a shelter where if the Russians came and bombed, because they were coming any day now, that I would hide in that shelter and be sheltered away from the Russians. And then the Chinese, you just could not, you just could not trust them. But we as Americans, we were honest. We did things right. We treated people fairly. We were democratic. I never would have thought of the things I have learned since I've been here in Tanzania and since I've visited the other countries such as Rwanda, Uganda, Lagos, Nigeria, that corruption would actually cause people to starve to death? That they would have food to eat? Can you imagine having food to eat, but you can't get to it? It's there, but you can't reach it. One of the things about being blind, and I'm not celebrating the fact I'm blind, I would like to see, but I'm telling you something, there's so many things you see when you're blind. There's so many things you see. But when you're blind, and I'm going to tell you this, when you don't know, and many of us are blind, we're blind to the realities of corruption. And we go day to day and not think about it and not do anything about it, but it's deep. It is deep. We as Americans and some of the other countries, we've always sent money to Africa. We've always say help the little children in Africa. They have implored us. They have talked to us. They have made us feel guilty because we were eating, eating, and they said the Africans were not eating. That our toss away of food meant that some hungry child in some other place in the world didn't have a choice and they had to eat anything. I wasn't the only one that the parents might have said that to. We were wasting food. We had to send money for the children of Africa because they don't have money, they don't have shoes, they don't have clothes. That's corruption. Because that's not true. They have the ability, they have money. They could have all the food they want, all the clothing they want, but they have shackles on their arms and legs. Shackles on the mind. Shackles not to understand that there's a bigger, brighter world and they can attain it. It's theirs for the taking. They've been made to believe that uh, they are a lesser person to a great extent. That this may not have been God's purpose for them to survive and be filled with food and have things. He, had, he put gold, silver, and diamonds right here with them. But yet, the humbleness and the sorrow and the, 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 what you go through because you're poor and you're going to get to eventually. You can't walk on gold here. You, you can't possess it here, but you're going to possess it in the hereafter.
what have we been sold on? I'm asking you, open your eyes. Open your eyes to understand. Open your eyes to understand this, that there's 1.4 billion of us here in Africa. And in Europe, the turnaround for money and profit with what they do, the products they produce, there's a 19% income. For the Chinese, it's 30%. But for Africa, it's 1.9. And Europe has only 785 million people. We have two times that much here, that amount. And we have far more wealth than they have. But I'm not only speaking about Europe. I'm talking about the people here in Africa. How can they stand? How can they cheat each other, their brother? They call each other brother and sister. And then they turn around and mistreat them. They eat and get fat. And because they are cooperating against their own brother or their own sister or their own mother and father and finding out what's best for them. Cor cor corruption at the highest point. Corruption. Corruption. The only thing I really hate is the fact that according to what I've been told when I was a little girl, is that no matter what you do, Jesus is going to forgive you. So that person that's causing people to starve, hey, Jesus is going to forgive them if they ask for forgiveness. If they're going to suffer in this life for the terrors of what they've done, they ain't not suffering enough. They're not suffering enough. I think it's time for us to do this one thing. I don't have anything against being Muslim. I don't have anything against being Christian. I don't have anything against being Baha'i. I don't have anything against being a Latter-day Saint or whatever, any religion. We're all spiritual, especially we as Africans. We're all spiritual. We long to worship and follow a creator a higher force bigger than us. But can you imagine that your father gives you everything? You have everything in your possession, but yet you are a starving child? Corruption. You have to come to Africa to understand what I'm talking about. And not only Africa. I started learning some things when I was living in Costa Rica. Near Nicaragua, Panama. I've seen things in Panama that I don't like to think about. And some of the things I really kind of swept under the carpet of my mind because I didn't want to face them. I'm comfortable. I've lived a good life. My parents, my father worked three jobs to feed me, but I got fed. I had a house. I went to school. I had no worries, really. I don't even understand some of the lives or the things people suffer here in Africa, the things they face or some of the things they suffer, not only here in Africa, in Costa Rica, in Panama, in Peru, in a lot of parts of the world. The Philippines, I never, never. Thailand, I don't care where you try to run. The fact that corruption, that the people that have a lot want more and more and more and more. So I hope you listen to what I'm saying. Because it only doesn't only apply to Africa. It applies to everywhere in the world where poor people are, but especially 
the poor black man that is actually rich. We're rich. But we're impoverished because of our blindness. For some reason, we're blind to the fact and knowledge and know that we are number one. We are the first among all nations. Nobody came till we came. It's a fact and it's been proven. So corruption is not something, a word you hear, and you just shake your head. It's something you need to pursue, you need to look at, you need to understand. I don't care if you are 80, 90 years old. Do not leave this planet without actually knowing what's going on here. Do not leave your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren down the alley of thinking everything's going to be all right without us having to do something. We have to make a change, and the change is only going to come from you and me. It's not going to come from heaven. Because we have the power inside of us to make the change. We have it. Flex those spiritual muscles. And let's come up. Let's, let's stop this. Let's stop it. Let's stop it. Okay. Hey. I hate that. I don't want to be mean. I don't want to be angry. But it really Ticks me off when I think about how ignorant I was. I just said no. How things I just did not know and understand. I don't hate anybody for it. But I'm not going to let them take any more from me. And I hope you don't either. And it's not by hitting or killing or stabbing or cutting anybody. It's about making a stand and said, I've had enough and I ain't take it no more. You understand? Okay, hey, this is Janetta. Look at me on Black Sea Radio. I, I don't talk enough about Black Sea Radio. We're broadcasting now in Thailand, Panama, I think Mexico some places in the United States, we're starting to hit it worldwide. You'll enjoy the music. You'll enjoy the talk shows. But look at Black Sea Radio. I come on on Saturdays at 8 o'clock in Costa Rica. But look at the schedule, blacksitradio.com. And when you do that, hey, just in case you missed that, YouTube, TikTok, Facebook, look me up. Look me up. Help me to spread the word of understanding. Because we need to know. <laughs> we need to know. And if I'm wrong, you say something. If I'm saying something wrong that is not true, tell me. Tell me. Let me know. I am not too old to learn. And I'm not too old to be corrected. So... You make sure you comment, you make sure you share it, and you make sure you like it. If you don't like it, comment. Tell me if I could do better. But continue to listen because you're going to learn some things. And there's others just like me on the internet that are trying to put out the story to open our eyes that we may see. And when you see, you think different and you do things different. Okay. All right. Whoop. Let me see. Did I get my whoop, whoop back? Let me check it. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. Hey, this is Janetta, and you're watching Africa Speaks the 